Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I was recently reminded of something I had seen at my first Halloween convention here in Los Angeles about eight years ago. It was stashed away into the corner of the show floor, but it was essentially a box with a bunch of straws in it set up vertically, and they were pushing fog or ultrasonic mist of some kind through it, and they were able to project an image onto the fog. Now, I always thought this was an interesting idea, but I didn't really have an application for it at the time. Well, here we are, it's later, and now I've got an application for it. I'm gonna to try, to the best of my recollection, to build a similar device to be used in a haunt situation where you can project an image onto fog. Now, I have no idea whether this will work or not, and it's highly experimental, but you're coming along for the ride. So let's get to it. Like most projects, this started off with a bit of research before pulling out my sketchbook and getting my ideas down on paper. What I'm trying to do is create a sheet of fog that's kept in a vertical orientation by two outside channels of air. So I think by using a triangular form, I should be able to direct the path of the air through a thin opening, which should create added air pressure, and with the fog suspended between the two channels of air created by the fans, it should give me a surface to project an image onto. And after sketching a few ideas, I selected the version I think most likely to achieve the desired effect before heading into Adobe Illustrator to finalize measurements and create a pattern. With my pattern finalized, I save the design as an SVG file for cutting on my Glowforge. Although this project can just as easily be done with standard tools like a jigsaw or a handsaw and a drill. But when you've got a laser at your disposal, why not use it? Plus, if I need to iterate on my design, this is a much faster way for me to do it. Now that I have my pieces cut, it's time for assembly. I'll be using CA glue and a bit of activator to speed up the drying process. Because I'm not sure at this point whether this idea will work or not, I'm looking to move as quickly as possible and this is a great way to speed up the glue drying time. I also like to backfill the seams with a bit more glue just to give this 3mm board some added stability. If I were going to make this for long term use, I would probably add in some kind of blocking or brackets to make the box more rigid. Once I have the base and vertical panels assembled, I can add in the 5 inch fans using some 2 inch hardware. These fans are designed for use with a computer power supply and run off 12 volts which thankfully I have boxes full of random power supplies that would work to power them. Since this was a prototype, I didn't bother to create mounting holes, so in the meantime I'll just use some 2 inch screws and some oversized washers to hold them in place. Next, I clipped off the ends of the fan leads and stripped the wires before joining the positive and negative leads from each fan and inserting them into a standard size barrel connector. A quick test to make sure the fans are working, and then we can move on to the fog inlet pipe. Or at least that's what I'm calling it for this build. The fog inlet pipe is made from a one inch piece of PVC that I'll cut a 12 millimeter channel into. The pipe will then be held in orientation using the holes I cut in the side walls of the box. This channel will need to accommodate three pieces of corrugated plastic sheet, but I'll get to that in a minute. In the meantime, let's get to cutting.
The last thing to do before we can test fit everything is to attach the side panels to close up the lower chamber. These were installed just like the rest of the box. Now I can insert the pipe and we can talk about the corrugated plastic sheets. My research told me that the fog needed to be directed into an organized vertical orientation before it's introduced to the channels of air created by the fans. So by using the corrugated plastic, which has small channels, it should help to make a more consistent fog surface. For this build, I used an old yard sign that I glued together and cut down to fit into the PVC pipe slot. But you could just as easily buy sheets of corrugated plastic at your local hardware store. At this point in the build, I still don't know whether this will work or not. But I'm in it this far, and I've got nothing to lose. So let's proceed. For the first test, I'm going to use a small fog machine connected with PVC pipe. And while you can see the projected image, the results are a bit inconclusive. Let me explain. The fog machine that I'm using tends to sputter during use, and it creates pockets of fog, which are very visible to the eye. And that's not what we're going for. The other issue is that if the fog machine is too close to the box, there's too much forward pressure, and the fog blasts through the box and is completely unaffected. You could resolve that by putting the fogger further away, which is what I did, or by creating some kind of containment unit for the fog to be held in, and the vacuum created by the fans would draw the fog into the box and then out. Neither are really good solutions. It was at this point that I came to the realization that I may need to switch from a fog machine to an ultrasonic mister. So I scoured the internet for high output humidifiers and stumbled across this model that's designed for reptile enclosures. It definitely puts out plenty of mist and has a larger water reservoir than most standard home humidifiers, so this may be a good fit. And with the vent tube plugged in, it's time to see if my assumption was right. As you can see, the mist is much less visible, but it also has some of the same pitfalls that the fog does. It's inconsistent, can't withstand a light breeze, and the image is still very blurry, and those are all bad things. Another unexpected issue is condensation. As the mist passes through the vent tube, some of it remains behind and collects in the tube, blocking the fog from leaving the humidifier. So there's definitely going to be a bit more problem solving to do, but that'll be for another day. All in all, there were a lot of lessons learned, but for now, I think this is where I'm going to leave this project. Well, there you go. I mean, sort of. Fog and mist both come with their own unique set of challenges, but I think the idea is sound and maybe with a bit of crowdsourcing, we can come up with a better solution on how to make this effect a reality. So leave me a comment down below and tell me how you might go about it. I'd like to give a special thanks to Spectral Illusions for providing their Restless Spirit digital effect for use in this video. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something.